All right, so on another kind of uh, segment of truing, we kind of want to walk through a little bit of the process of truing and what we're actually really doing. So we're going to kind of draw this out to where you can kind of follow along. So this would be a normal flight path of the bullet. So here, we're just going to say this is trans. All right, so this is Mach 1.2. All right, so here would be subsonic Mach 1. And we'll say this is 0.9 Mach. All right, we'll talk about the importance of each one. So right now, I want to find within 10%. So this number here is trans. So when I go to MV Calc, this is the actual range that it's going to give me at the top right part of the page. So if it says uh, 780 meters, all right, this is Mach 1.2. I really don't want to true past that because if you don't have uh, a bullet that's stable, you, let's say shooting a 168, 12 twist, it may be falling off. So you, you may be perfect to here and then the bullet's starting to drift off because you're losing a little bit of stability. So what happens when it thinks it's hitting here but it really hits here, it goes, hey, you're, you're slowing your muzzle velocity. So now I'd redraw this underneath where your actual plot path of the bullet's actually higher. So you want to be careful until you know for sure your bullet's stable and past transonic that you always want to stay within 10%. You'd never true here because you don't have a resolution right, of the muzzle velocity because uh, of how much muzzle velocity actually moves your bullet in the close distances. So this is why we'd always want to be within 10% when we're truing. Uh, within 20% is kind of doable, but within 10% we have good resolution and we won't mess up what our actual muzzle velocity is. So, and then once we go past this, so what this is, it's just connecting a dot. So if we start this, Let's just say we don't actually hit perfect. So our bullet hits down here. Well now, instead of 2600 on our muzzle velocity, right, for this line, this line says, well, we're only running 2550. All right, so it's giving me the corrected muzzle velocity for this point. So I'm taking the algorithm and I'm just pulling it down to this line. The bullet doesn't, well, it doesn't get the line. It's always going to tell the truth. If I have a good 100 meter zero and that's what I plugged into the Kestrel as my zero and I have good density altitude with a proper custom drag model, it's going to follow this and this will be perfect. Now, it doesn't matter whether I'm using a G1 or a G7 or a custom drag model in the supersonic. It's going to be real close in prediction. The big deal with G1, G7, what's going to happen past. So with the custom drag model now, this line's going out so we could actually erase all of this line at this point because it's not real. And so all the math is being done off this. Well, here is 0.9 mile. Well, if I actually hit here, so it's dropping off a little bit. It could be for a lot of reasons. It could be the barrel's a little bit worn out. It's not in, in putting enough uh, spin stability on the bullet. So we might actually see the bullet starting to come down here. All it's doing is taking this line again and bringing it down to here. So this prediction changes. Again, it's just connecting the dots. That's all we're doing. So we're saying known data point. The bullet hit here. The, the computer will estimate this is a velocity with the VC that you plug in or the custom drag model. The next spot, whether it hits dead on, and most of the time it will if you've done a really good job. But the biggest problem that we see is guys don't get good enough resolution. Resolution is huge right now at this point. So if you take a target and you shoot it and it hits here, 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 and let's just say the target is 0.6 mils tall, all right, from here all the way down to here. So you got a 0.5 mil group right now. That's not good enough resolution. So obviously you kind of cut it in half, but what if this was a bad shot or a flyer? You're really up here and now you have 0.3 mils that you're off. At the distance of trans, that's 30 feet per second as a, as a kind of standard rule. So having really good resolution of exactly where this is. So you want to make sure this is the reason we measure long to predict short. So we really want to make sure that we can shoot a good nice group at distance to be actually able to predict what our muzzle velocity is at that distance or that range. And then now with 100 meters zero and a good muzzle velocity, it should predict exactly where the bullet hit. But again, there's a little variables that can come into play. A lot of it could be barrel. It could be that your resolution wasn't correct. Maybe you didn't plug in your direction of fire out here, or maybe you have a headwind tailwind change your time of flight that you didn't account for. All these are your problems, not the problems coming from the Kestrel or the ballistic solution. But 
at any point we would actually true the drop to where the bullet actually hit. So if it did this, we would actually come down here, true your DSF at that, and we'd at least want to be at 0.9 Mach or farther out. How about here at 0.8 Mach? Absolutely. So it doesn't really matter whether you're at 0.9 or at 0.8, we just want to be farther. We don't want to be inside, and this is the reason why. So if we have a cone of fire here on the first line, all right, where we started the prediction, but now we have a cone of fire once we true it here, the cone of fires are overlapping, so we have no real resolution of what is happening with the drag as it's going farther out. So we're basically bending the algorithm, but we don't know if it's in this line or in this circle down here. All right, we don't know exactly where we're at, but if we have the same resolution out here, I can see within my cone of fire, all my bullets hitting here, they're not overlapping here, so I have a better resolution of where that bullet's actually going. So we can take this line, bend it down to, to within good accuracy here on this line. So we have, basically we're, we're defining or building an algorithm based on your bullets actually, at your bullets actual flight path. And that's what we're looking for. And that's why it's more accurate and it becomes a custom algorithm built for your weapon system.